Hello everybody and welcome to episode number two in my new ongoing series where we go through the Pokedex one Pokemon at a time and we rank their respective trading cards. So in today's episode we are focusing on Ivysaur. A quick update, I have made a change to my ranking sheet up above my head so now I can go up to 10 points. That means that we get one extra point potential for artwork as well as the grading difficulty. I was able to see where I could make some improvements in the last episode and yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So first up here is going to be Ivysaur from Dark Explorers. And when we hop over to TCG Fish, we're going to notice right off the bat, this is not in English. They do have an English one, but when I try to go to the page, for whatever reason, it just would not load for me. So this is the closest thing that I can actually be able to pull this data from on TCG Fish. So let's go ahead and go through our point system. First up is playability. Is it an F, G, or H? Is this something that you could technically still play in tournaments or has it moved out of rotation? We do not see that in the bottom left-hand corner of this card, so it gets zero points. As far as for variations go, I'm just seeing that the, it has the first edition right here, so it seems like it's really limited. So it is going to start with one point there. Then we move on to the artwork. Personally, I really like the posture position of this Ivysaur, kind of leaning back a little bit while also still leaning forward, or looking back, I should say, while looking forward. And the light, all the contrast, everything that's going on, I think it's pretty good. So if we're talking about from a scale of one to four for the artwork on this, I'm gonna go ahead and give this, I think it gets a solid, we'll give it a three. I'm almost on the verge of going to two, but we'll give it a three right there. So we got one point plus three, that's up to four. And then the grading difficulty, it's very easy. So this one only gets one point. So three plus one, that's four, five. We're up to five points. That's going to put it in the B category. So first one goes up into the B category because it gets five points right there in the middle. On to the next Pokemon. We have Ivysaur from Diamond and Pearl Secret Wonders. Now this Pokemon right here, you're going to notice that it does not have that playability factor in the bottom left hand corner, so it gets a zero. Variations, we just have the reverse foil and the original for this, so it seems very limited. We'll give it one point for that. Then from a grading difficulty standpoint, this is very hard. So because it's a very hard, it's going to get the maximum points allowed, that's four. So one point for variations, four point for artwork, that puts it at five uh, for the, sorry, four points for the grading difficulty, that puts it at five. And as far as for the artwork itself as well, I think it looks pretty darn good. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a three. So a total we're looking at is seven. Seven points, going to put it right there near the top. Not quite an S, but it is pretty darn close. All right, now moving on to the next one. Next up, we have Ivysaur. This is from the Platinum Supreme Victors. With this Ivysaur, we can see once again that there's no playability factor in the bottom left-hand side. So zero points right there. Variations, very limited. One point to start with. It is ranked as a hard, so another three. That puts it at four points. And then the last one we have is the artwork itself. The artwork is whimsical. It's playful. I do like that I can clearly see the characters, so I'm going to go ahead and give this three points there as well. So three, three, six, plus one. We're up to seven points. That means that we're going to put this up right we're gonna put it right up at an A. And on to the next Pokemon. This is Ivysaur from the EX Fire Red Leaf Green. And again, no playability factor in the bottom left hand side. So it is gonna miss one point from that side. Uh, variations, looks like it's quite limited. We'll give it one point there. The artwork, I do not like this artwork. I'm really sorry, but I just don't. It's just bleeding into all the other aspects of the artwork, kind of like watercolor down. Some people may like that aspect to it. Don't get me wrong. I tend to also like a lot of abstract art, 
but um, yeah, this just kind of seems mushy. I think that's the best word that I could probably use for this. So I'm only gonna give it one point for the artwork. So one point for variations, one point for artwork, we're up to two points. And then from a grading difficulty standpoint, it's moderate, so it's gonna get two points there. So total of four points. Four points means that we go to the second from the bottom. So that's gonna get a grade of C. All right, now moving on to Ivysaur. This is from Pokemon Go. And this one it does have an F in the bottom left-hand corner. So as far as the playability side to this, come on, uh, as far as the playability side to this, it does get one point. Variations, very limited it seems. So that's also gonna get one point. So we're up to two. The artwork, I think that this looks really fun. I love the color scheme on this. It's really cool seeing that sort of transparent or uh, the low opacity, semi-transparent, I should say, Pokemon ball, the Pokeball sign in the top left-hand corner there. Uh, I just, I really, really like how this is set up. So I'm actually going to give it four points. So we're now up to six from the artwork side. And then the grading difficulty we have here is hard. That's for the reverse foil. And for the original is also hard. So off of, uh, sorry, the original is moderate, but the reverse foil is hard. So kind of bouncing between those two. Let's see, the hard difficulty has a total of 32. And then the normal one only has seven. So we're actually gonna go with the reverse hollow, the reverse foil one. It does have more cards being ranked uh, in total. And with it being ranked as a hard, we're gonna give it we're gonna give it uh, three points. So off of six, that puts it up to nine. So this is the first Pokemon that I'm gonna go ahead and move this up to an S rank. Now we move on. This is Ivysaur from the base set, but do keep in mind that this comes in the Unlimited, the first edition, Shadowless, the 1999 to 2004th print. So we see this quite a bit. What does that mean? Well, first off, is does it have the playability factor to it? No, it doesn't. So it gets zero points there. Variations, there's a lot of them, so it also gets zero points there. As far as for the artwork goes, it having kind of this swampy type background, the Bulbasaur itself does pop out to the front a bit. You can very clearly see the Bulbasaur. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a... I'm going to give this a... I'm going to give it a three. I just feel like that this very much feels like you're looking at the origins of the Pokemon and that they did a really good job with the original artwork. You know, like when you think about Pikachu, for example, you got the chunky Pikachu and then it kind of becomes really thin and this and that. I think this Ivysaur looks quite a bit towards a uh, contribution to the actual Ivysaur that we're still using today. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a solid three for the artwork and the grading difficulty. Let's see, we have moderate for the unlimited. The first edition has hard. Shadowless has moderate. And the 1999 to 2004 print has an easy. 291, 2202, we have 1839, and 4000. So there's a lot going for the unlimited side. And there's quite a few for the first edition as well. Moderate, moderate. Yeah, we've got two sets of moderate, and then the first edition is more on the hard. So we're going to go ahead and go with the moderate for the ruling on this one from a broad perspective. So for that specific purpose, then that means that we're going to give it two points. So two points plus the artwork, that puts it at six. Six points in total would move it up to the third level, which is a B. Not A, it's B. It's AB, not AB, but you, you get my point. All right, all right. You guys are like, I'm confused. Uh, now, this is the other thing, too, I want to point out is that there's this Ivysaur, which is from the Legendary Collection. This one looks really nice. I love the background for this specific card. It does have a hard difficulty for it, not something that's playable. But I just wanted to go ahead and showcase this for you guys a little bit. That's a reverse foil. And then the original is actually ranked as an easy. So, 
breaking down between the easy and the hard would basically put it as a moderate. So yeah, basically keeping that one the same. Okay, now moving on to the Ivysaur from Sun and Moon Shining Legends. This card, is it playable? No, it is not. We do not see FGH in the bottom left corner. What else about it? Does it have any wild variations? As far as I can tell, no. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and give it one point for the variation side. The artwork, I think it's pretty good. I do like the fact that he's out in an area that looks like it's filled with grass. You got the sun sort of setting, but also there's sort of like a fish lens effect. So having this change perspective from something that's you know being hand drawn. I think it's quite creative, it's quite fun, it's whimsical. There's little bits of that grass that's kind of popping up into the air there. And it's got a really fun expression and attitude. Like literally, it's off having fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it three points for the artwork there. That puts us up to four. And then the grading difficulty, it's moderate for the reverse foil with 34 cards. The original is uh, has 50 cards and that's at easy. So between the two of these, they're pretty close. Um, I think in this instance, because we have more populated for the original, we're gonna go ahead and give this an easy. So that means just one point. So it puts it up to five. Five points puts us right on the third level. And then up next, it's hard to see because we got all these tabs. Up next, we have Ivysaur from the Expedition. And we do not have the playability factor. Zero there. As far as for variations, looks like it's quite limited. Gets one point there, the artwork. The artwork looks like there was a children's contest and it was submitted. And it very well could have been the case. I may be saying something like that and just don't know the history behind this. But the artwork itself very clearly defines the Ivysaur. I'm not the biggest fan because of the background. There's not really much that's going on there. And so for that purpose, I'm not gonna rank it a one, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it two. So it gets two points. That's gonna go ahead and put it up to three. Three total. And then lastly is how is its grading? So it has moderate grading for the reverse foil. It's 105 cards. And it's easy for the original 116. So yeah, we're just gonna give it one point there. That's gonna put it at four. Four points total, which means you're gonna be moved over to the C. On to the next card. Now we have Ivysaur from Pop Series 3. And this one, no playability factor in the bottom left-hand side. Very limited in its variations. We see it just shows it as original for here. So it gets one point there. The artwork. I I actually like this quite a bit, to be honest. It's kind of like waving, giving a hand sign a bit. Um, but again, we can't really see too much what's going on with the background. The overall drawing of the Ivasaur, I still think looks really good. So close to a four, but I'm still going to give it three points. So that moves it up to four points total. And then as far as for ranking goes, um, the grading difficulty, I should say, it gets one point because it's easy, so it's only at five points. Five points moves it up to the third level. We're a B. Now, uh, let's see, where are we at? Go through our tabs. Up next is Ivysaur from Pop Series 2. And if you guys kind of notice a little bit of a trend of what I think about the art, you'll probably expect what I'm gonna say here in a minute. Is it playable? No. Does that have variations? It's really limited, it looks like. So it gets one point there. The artwork. I do not like this artwork. It's so bleached out. Like this thing looks as if whoever the artist was left the artwork out in the sun for months and then submitted it in and then they used that as the actual artwork for the face of the card. It's just so bleached out. And, you know, you can tell that there's an Ivysaur that's there, but I don't like all these little points all around it that just makes it hard to kind of see the outer edges of the Pokemon. I just, I don't care for it. So I'm only going to give it one point there. And then as far as a grading perspective goes, 
it is an easy. So it almost ranked to the bottom, but it just barely squeezed out and gets put into the C category. Up next, we have Ivysaur Southern Islands promo. No playability factor. Variations, we have very limited, so it gets one point. The artwork itself. I don't really care for that green that's going on right behind the Pokemon because the Pokemon already itself is green. You got the green leaves that kind of bleed in together. It just seems really weird. So I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to give it one point there. And then for the grading difficulty, it just barely squeezed out. It's on a moderate right here. So it's not easy. It's going to get two points there. Puts it up to four. That's going to move it up also into the C category. Some of these are a little bit risky, almost in the D side, like the worst of the worst, but as it is, managed, it managed to go ahead and push itself through. Okay, up next, this Ivysaur from my first battle. I did not see it on the other website, so uh, as far as from a grading perspective goes, I don't have that. It's a reference point according to the FISH website. So yeah, let's go ahead and start about whether or not it's playable. No, not playable. I don't see that in the bottom left. Zero points there. Variations, seems like it's limited. We'll give it one point. The artwork itself, it's cute, it's fun. Has almost like a colored pencil sort of vibe going off to it. So I like it quite a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and give it three points there. That moves it up to four points total. And then from a grading perspective, because we don't have a reference point, it's just gonna get one. Uh, Again, I don't have that reference point off of that website. So five points total off of that. Five points moves it up to the third level. You're also going to get a B. And up next. What happened here? I don't know why it's refreshing the page. That was weird. Hopefully it's not going to do that to the other tabs. We have Erica's Ivysaur. Is it playable? No, it's not. Does that have a lot of variations? No. So it gets one point. The artwork itself, the Ivysaur, it is hiding amongst all of these different flowers, but it just feels kind of like a cartoon image forced into this other world that doesn't really match the art style. So I'm not that big of a fan of it. I'm going to give it one point from an art side. Then we talk about the, what else do we have? Yeah, so we're up to two points there, and then the grading difficulty, unlimited, it got, has moderate right there, and then the first edition, first edition is also moderate, so it's going to get two more points, has a total of four points. That's going to put it up to a ranking of C. Then we have Ivysaur from Scarlet and Violet 151. I love it. I really, really like the look of this card. So let's see how well it does. First off, playability factor has that one point. Variations, very limited in that regard. Up to two points. The artwork, so nice. Having the light shining down, it has the grass around it. You can clearly see this Pokemon. It looks like as if the flower is trying to bloom through the light. I mean, just the shadows that are going on, all of this. I really, really like this card. That's going to get another four points. So that puts it up to six. The grading difficulty, that's the hard part, is that I don't see the grading difficulty on this. So unfortunately, it's only going to get one point there. So off of that, it's going to give it a total of seven points. So still quite good, but not quite good enough from our scale perspective to get it moved all the way up to an S. If the grading difficulty in the future proves that this is a card that it's not that easy to actually get a high grade score, then I would definitely move it up to an S. Don't get me wrong, guys. A's are still really good. So like, for example, the next card we're going to take a look at, the Full Art. This Ivy uh, Ivysaur, also from Scarlet and Violet 151. 
really nice looking card. Has the playability factor, extremely limited. Two points right there. You already know I'm gonna say this, four points for the artwork. This is super solid to see cards that have full illustration artwork. The fact that this one has like the vine whip kind of going on, the ripples going on in the water right in front of it. You can see the reflection of its face. It's surrounded by all this other set of uh, grassy nature. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful, right? So one plus one plus four, we're up to six points. But what about for the grading side? I don't see it on the other website. So it's gonna get one point there. Still, really, really good, moves it up to an A. But as it is right now, I'm not seeing that option that can help me push it all the way up to an S level. Up next is Ivysaur from EX Crystal Guardians. Playability factor, no. Variations, very limited, one point. Artwork, I love it. <laughs> This style, it gives off a vibe, kind of like as if it was drawn with chalk or something, the way that the outlines work. The Ivysaur jumping up in the air, the petals floating in the air, right? You don't see all these little tiny specks. It has enough definition with larger objects so you can still tell what's going on. And I just think it, it flows really, really well. I'm gonna give it four points for the artwork. So that means we're up to five. And as far as for the grading goes, the reverse foil, it's moderate. The original, that is easy. But the amount of people that are doing the submissions for this looks to be more on the reverse foil side. And that's a moderate, so it's gonna get two points there. That puts us up to seven, right? So uh, again, let me just double check on that one. Playability, no, that's zero. Variations, one point. Artwork four points. Yeah, it's five. Grading difficulty gets two more. Yeah, seven. Okay. Still quite good, though. I'm a big fan of that art style. Then we have Ivysaur, EX Crystal Guardians. Playability factor, zero. What about the variations? Well, <clears throat> this has the reverse foil, the original, and the pre-release. If we move out of that territory of one to two, I feel that it's more appropriate to say it has a decent amount of variation. So I'm going to give it a zero there. <clears throat> so unfortunately, we have zero points so far. But what about the artwork? The artwork, I think it's pretty solid. It's a little weird having these kind of like crystal things. Almost makes it look like it has way too many toes going on everywhere. And it also looks like it's at the beach, so it doesn't really seem to fit the environment too much. Kind of like the fact that it almost looks like it's having a fun day at the beach. And I do like the expression that's going on in its face, but I'm not like super, super in love with it. Um, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a two. So a two for the artwork. And then as far as for the grading difficulty goes, pre-release, there's 139 for it to be hard, original has 32 as a hard and then the reverse foil uh that's also as a hard so it looks like all three of these are hard right hard 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 yeah okay so it's gonna get three points off of that that puts it at five five points means that we go into the third category all right b now we got the last pokemon no pokemon has gotten a d yet is this one going to be able to avoid it how well can this do? This is the Dark Ivysaur. Looks like it is smacking its head against the wall there. It also has kind of a, um, I think the color is a bit different, that bluish color that's going on with it. Playability factor, zero. Variations on this seems pretty limited. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and give it one point. The artwork itself, you can, you can tell the Pokemon... But I don't know with the eyes and what it's doing. It is a dark Pokemon. It's, what, it's just like smacking its head against a tree or something. I feel like the action that it's doing could have been a bit better. It says Fury Strikes. It does look like it's a bit. Uh, uh, it's in a bit of a fury itself. Uh, but again, like why is it doing it with its head? Feel kind of weird. Uh, I'm not going to give it one point. I guess I'll go ahead and give it two points there. That'll put it at three. 
And then the last thing is for the grading perspective. The original is set as easy. The winner version is set as moderate. Let's see, there's 544 versus 520. They're really, really close. So there's a little bit more on the original side for easy. So I'm just going to give it one point there. So that puts us up to four points. And four points means it gets moved into the C category. Okay, so there you go, guys. There are my rankings for the Ivysaur, car Ivysaur, Ivysaur cards. I feel like I'm starting to have tongue twister issues. I want to know if you guys agree with me, if you disagree with me on any of these cards. These cards that are in the A level, for example, that full art, if it shows that it is difficult to actually get a high level grade, then I think it's quite likely that it can move over into the S category. I mean, I want to know what you guys think, though. So share your thoughts with us down in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe for more Pokemon card related news and as well as going through all of these cards. And yes, I know that there's new sets that will come out. Things can definitely change. Um, I could potentially go back and just pick certain cards if I ever get to the point where I fully review the entire Pokedex. But keep in mind, that is that is so many Pokemon. That would take a long time. And we have plenty to be able to work through on this. Okay? I appreciate you guys so much. God bless. And we'll see you in the next episode.